Sorry for the delay since my last news update, guys. I had some videos last week all ready to go, man. Had the audio all recorded and everything, but a lot going on last week, man. So, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the videos. But, um, man, we've had so much stuff going on, though, man. Uh, I don't even know where to start as far as catching up. But uh, one thing I just want to get out of the way real quick. So, uh, in the last few days, we've had two really devastating mass shootings on the south side. And uh, these are not... You know, obviously the only two that we've had this year, we've had a lot of mass shootings on the South Side, man. But these were particularly bad as far as the number of victims, man, is just how they went down, the women that were killed. Uh, so the first one, and if you watch the local Chicago media, you already heard about this, man. But uh, I just want to give some uh, some other commentary on this, man. So 10 people were shot early Saturday morning in an attack in the Chatham neighborhood on the South Side. Now, Chatham is a neighborhood, guys. That uh, is kind of split as far as like the economic demographics of Chatham. You've got some homes in Chatham that are pretty well off. This is where Chance the Rapper is from, okay, and his uh, his father, you know, who's a uh, work for the city. Uh, and you've got a lot of black families over there that have money, okay, a lot of like well educated uh, professional white collar workers over in Chatham. Um, it's like one of the wealthier black areas of the city. And uh, Rhyme Fest, actually, a Chicago rapper. He was on Chicago Tonight, I remember, um, and he was talk. He lives over there, okay, and he was talking about the uh, the mortgages and the rents in Chatham. And according to him, and to be honest with you, I haven't actually looked this up statistically. I probably should have done my research on this, but he was saying that uh, the the rents and the mortgages over there are equivalent to what they are in Lincoln Park, which is considered to be one of the more high end, like white neighborhoods on the north side. Okay, so that's. Just giving you a little idea, like, of how Chatham is economically, okay? Now, what I'm hearing, though, is that part of Chatham is, like, low income, okay? And I'm not from Chatham, so I can't, you know, speak on that firsthand, but I've heard that it's kind of like a mixed community economically, not racially. I'm pretty sure it's all black, okay, as far as racially, man. But uh, in this mass shooting, there were 10 people shot, and again, this was early Saturday morning. The Cook County Medical Examiner has identified... Uh, one of the women, uh, a woman named Kim, she was 29 years old, uh, as the only person that was killed in this mass shooting. This happened just after 2 a.m. And uh, Chicago police said the victims were on the sidewalk when two male suspects approached and opened fire. So what was really crazy about this shooting was that the police were actually right there. And it doesn't appear to be a gang-related shooting. Just, uh, you know, involving something that happened right there at the scene. This is like one of the, uh, like, top... Uh, black business districts in the city of Chicago. The woman was shot in the stomach and in the knee and she later died at the hospital. Friends uh, were sharing pictures of her before they honored the mother and Chicago resident with prayers and a balloon release. So the rest of the victims uh, ranged in ages from 23 to 46. So these are not like youngsters, you know what I'm saying? These are not like, you know, 15, 16 year old kids. One of the neighbors was saying it's a tragedy right now. I'm praying for the victims and the families. Let me be clear, these attacks on 75th Street or anywhere in our communities are unacceptable. We've been working hard to rebuild 75th Street as a thriving business corridor. And uh, the community is committed to this vision. And, uh, I'm sorry, that's according to the 6th Ward Alderman, whose name is Roderick Sawyer. So he said these past nights will not undo years of hard work in business development. So as he's hinting at, you know, this is not like a... I wouldn't consider Chatham like a, a quote-unquote hood. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not like a ghetto area. I've, you know, driven down there and it's... I mean, it looks like a nice nice neighborhood. It looks just like the neighborhood, you know, you go on the northwest side, like around the, uh, like by the border of the city out by Elmwood Park. It looks like the same type of neighborhood as that. Um, so I wouldn't call this a hood by any stretch of the imagination, man. Um, I wouldn't compare it to like an Inglewood or a Garfield Park, like some neighborhood like that. Um, and yet it, this kind of thing still happened over there, man. But he said, um, uh, these are the actions of a few who were not patronizing the businesses. He said, I'm committing to continued investment in violence prevention methods and ensuring that our communities are safe. So obviously when something like this happens, you know, it hurts the reputation of the neighborhood and it drives businesses away. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it also drives like families that have uh, a good income away, okay, and lowers the values of the homes and stuff like that. So these kinds of incidents, man, uh, the politicians they have need to pay attention to this kind of stuff because one incident like this, you know, can send like shockwaves economically through the whole community and affect everybody. 
it's not just the people that are directly uh, impacted by the incident, man. But anyway, so Chicago fire officials previously had said seven people were shot and three were in critical. So, so locals said that it's known as a spot where people bring their stylish cars and motorcycles to show them off. They said somebody was cracking fireworks. I heard they didn't like that. The next thing I know, somebody just started shooting at the crowd just out of the blue. So this is the type of incident uh, which, to be honest with you, it doesn't sound gang-related. It sounds like something that happened right there at the spot. And again, according to some of the people there, um, it was over fireworks. Like somebody just didn't like the fact that they were setting off fireworks over there. Uh, and I don't know exactly what type of fireworks they were setting off. But uh, businesses along 75th, which is known as Chicago's Black Wall Street, are coming together vowing not to let the violence or the pandemic stop this neighborhood from thriving. So yesterday on Monday, we had 21 people shot in one day. Uh, over the weekend, we had 45 people shot. So, I mean, in the last three days, we've had almost 70 people shot, man. But uh, we also had another mass shooting. And uh, this was also part of the... Uh, the numbers on Monday, man. So uh, this is Chicago's latest mass shooting. It claimed the lives of two mothers and a man who had recently lost his close family. So it's the third mass shooting in Chicago in little over a week. It came at the end of a burst of violence that saw more than 25 people shot across the city in 10 hours. So one of the uh, ladies that was killed was a woman named Denise. She was in her early 30s. She was a mother of four boys and a girl and had just taken her children to Six Flags Great America over the weekend. Also killed was a woman named Shemitria. She was 19 years old and she was the mother of a two-year-old daughter. She was set to graduate from a Country Club Hills Trade and Tech Center on Tuesday. And the third woman who died in the attack was identified as Ratanya. She uh, was 28 years old. She lived in the Rogers Park neighborhood on the north side. Um, and uh, shout out to her former neighbor. Rest in peace, man. And a fourth fatality was a guy named Blake who was from that neighborhood. And he had recently lost his mother and grandmother. So that attack was the third mass shooting in Chicago in a little over seven days. So shout out also to Pastor Donovan Price. He's the community activist that I've told you guys about a lot of times. I, I uh, suggest you guys follow him on Twitter. He's he's like Spot News and all these other accounts, man. They're giving uh, like minute to minute updates on the city, man. He goes to all the shootings and um, basically, you know, offers services to the victims. He said that he's never seen anything like the last 10 days in Chicago in more than five years that he's worked as a street pastor. He said, this is the worst ever. And um, he said, it's worse than it's ever been. It's devastating. So Chicago police released few details of how the eight people were shot, but they said it occurred when an argument broke out inside the home. There were eight victims, four of the victims were pronounced dead at the scene. So there were two volleys of gunshots inside the home hours apart. So the first was around 2 a.m. when the shot spotter system alert alerted police to gunfire near that address, uh, according to the police chief, but he did not say if police responded to the alert. So there were shots again around 5 a.m., okay? And this was the time that the officers arrived to find the victims. So police recovered shell casings inside the house in a large capacity drum magazine. There was no sign of forced entry. So at least one of the victims um, was, you know, from that neighborhood and he was a barber who cut hair. And the police chief did not elaborate on the relationships of the victims and the shooter or what the argument was about. So again, not gang related, but he said the victims were taken to hospitals and they had not been interviewed by detectives. So the investigation is still very preliminary. He said, he said, all we know about this residence is that there's been several calls there for disturbances. Overall, the block where the residence is located is fairly quiet, not much activity going on. And uh, the family of one of the victims said that she was a devoted mother. They said she was a good person, a free spirited person, and she loved her family. So she lived on the South side, but the family didn't know what brought her to that gathering. So a man who had said that he was uh, the brother said that his sister had been to the house many times before. So this was in Inglewood, unlike the one in Chatham. And you guys know Inglewood. I mean, Inglewood has that reputation. Um, I highly advise against going to house parties or anything like that in Inglewood. You know what I'm saying? Chatham is a different story. Uh, the one in Chatham, you know, that's quite surprising. But the one in Inglewood is not surprising. You know what I'm saying? This, this kind of thing happens in Inglewood quite a lot. So, I mean, it, it is what it is. You know, I don't like the sugarcoat stuff. Uh, Inglewood has a reputation that it has. It's the number two neighborhood in the city for shootings and homicides uh, behind Garfield Park. So just be advised of that, man, you know. I mean, but that has a nationwide reputation. A lot of famous rappers from Inglewood. Just a reminder, man, that not everything in Chicago is gang-related. And a lot of stuff is just, you know, personal beef, man, at, like, these, uh, these parties. I've spoken on this before, man, about parties about, you know... 
even house parties. I mean, it's not just clubs. It's house parties, too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Any time where people are getting together to party, man, you always got, like, you know, a bunch of bull crap happening, man. It's just the way it is. The other mass shooting that they're referring to was one where six men and two women were wounded when someone in a silver car opened fire in a shooting uh, over in the Burnside neighborhood. Uh, it was almost 10 days ago. So there have been 390 homicides in Cook County so far this year. That's the county where Chicago is located. And about 300 of those were located in the city of Chicago. And uh, this time last year, the county had about 342, so we're up by about 50. So listen, guys, when it comes to these parties, man, you know, okay, summer is here. There's going to be a lot of parties, a lot of block parties, a lot of house parties. Okay, the city's reopening. Regardless, man, uh, there's a lot of times when we know that there's going to be certain people at these parties or that the parties are going to be about a certain thing. Like, for example, the day that, you know, a gang member died, okay, or like the birthday of a gang member Someday when the ops know that everybody's going to be getting together on that block, you know, certain parties like this. And I'm not saying that that was what these parties were. I don't believe that these parties had anything to do with that. Um, but, you know, the, the setting of the party, the nature of the party, what the party is about, what it's for, and who is going to be at the party. These are all factors that people need to take into consideration, man, when it comes to one's own safety. We need to be proactive, you know what I'm saying? And I've gotten invited to a million parties I've said no because, listen, man, there are some times when there's friends and even family, you know, when as hard as this may be, you got to stay away from, them, you know, especially in certain situations, you know what I'm saying, for one's own safety. Um, you know, there are certain people that just attract negative attention, okay? They attract bullcrap. They cause it. They attract it. You know what I'm saying? It seems to follow them everywhere that they go. And especially if I got young kids, I mean, which I don't, but I'm saying if I did, you know, I got to take them into consideration and put them first, you know, before I can go hang out with, you know, dude who I may have grown up with or whatever. You know, if he's still living that life, if he's still in the streets or if he's not in the streets, but if he's just a hot headed person, you know, what I'm saying that wants to get on that with the next person that steps on his shoes or bumps him or something like that. I might have to stay away from that, dude. You know, what I'm saying and just say, look, listen, I'm going to just kick it at home with the kids instead of going over there and, you know, find out what he's got going on, because every time. You know, he goes and gets together with somebody, something happens. Normally, okay, by the time somebody gets into their 20s and 30s, there's already been plenty of incidents and plenty of warning signs. This is the type of person that causes negative things to happen. And sometimes we got to be honest with people, man. You know what I'm saying? And just say, look, I'm, I'm, I'm chilling at the crib tonight, man. Like, there's just too much stuff going on in the city. I mean, there's ways that you can say it nicely. You know what I'm saying? Be like, man, there's too much going on. You know, I'm just I'm just going to kick it tonight with the, with the kids and hang out with them. That's it. You know what I'm saying? And just uh, stay away from these people that cause bad things to happen, man. And I'm not saying that there were people at these parties like that. You know, there's a first time for everything. So it may have been that these people just got together and something that nobody saw coming just happened. But I would say probably 90% of the time, man, there's plenty of warning signs and there's plenty of indication that, you know, a, a particular spot is going to be a risky spot to be at. You know what I'm saying? Now, the one in Chatham is a little, that's a little different, you know what I'm saying? Because like I said, it's in that Black Wall Street area. It was, you know, an area where a lot of people bring their cars. Rest in peace to all the victims, man. Your boy, Winnie City Report, I'm out.